uh, what does it mean to be healthy? You're asking me the question, what does it mean to be a great parent? Like, I don't have five things to be a great parent, right? It's a lifestyle. And it comes number one with the commitment that I am responsible for the life of another human being, the growth of another human being. The closest thing to leadership is parenting. You have to be an infinite student of parenting. You know, you want to be a parent, you ask your friends, you ask your own parents, you join groups, you read magazines, you watch talks, whatever it is, you're constantly consuming how to deal with this constantly changing challenge of being a parent. And it's ups and downs and successes and failures. You know, and that's what it is. Leadership is the same. Leaders, great leaders are students of leadership. No matter how achieved they may be, um, they're still learning. Um, and it's a lifestyle. It's the lifestyle of what I need to do to look after people, which includes things like listening, uh, learning how to give and receive feedback, um, learning how to have effective confrontations, how to discipline when necessary in a way that's constructive. Um, Roam the halls, get to know people, learning what it means to, to ask somebody questions. How do you ask questions? You know, like some people are naturally good at being curious about other human beings and some people are uncomfortable because they're introverts or whatever, socially awkward, but we can learn, you know? How do you learn to remember people's names? Oh, I'm bad at names. No, you've just decided you're bad at names. We can learn to be good at names so that when we walk down the hall and say, hey Tom, oh my God, he remembers my name. It's a nice feeling. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. There are many, many things we have to do and constantly work on to be a great leader to create that environment. Everything that we're talking about in The Infinite Game is really, 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 really hard. It is so much easier to build a company based on short-term ambitions than it is an infinite cause. It just is, right? It's also fun, right? Until it's not. Um, less inspiring, but sometimes, sometimes fun, right? Hitting a goal feels good, right? Um, it's much easier to just hire and fire people frequently, hire fast, fire fast, as to hiring slowly and, and firing slowly because we, we, we try and take care of our people as best we can. It's just, it's hard to build teams. All of that stuff we talked about leadership, like what am I supposed to do to build a trusting team? Well, I wish I could give you a list of five things. It's really, really hard to be a parent. It's much easier to be an uncle or an aunt or not have kids, right? It's hard, right? So why do it? You know, it's fun and, and, and exciting to, be, to try and beat our competitors, you know? But to, to have to face our own weaknesses every day, oh, that's exhausting. You know, existential flexibility, I'd rather not. I just would rather not. So, so the reason this takes courage to completely change our mindset, A, about the game that we're actually players in um, and how we want to approach these things and do we want to shift our mindset and our organizations to prepare for the infinite game, to be organized for the infinite game, it takes courage because we're gonna be swimming upstream in a world that is very finite driven. You know, the pressures on us are overwhelming from Wall Street or our own egos or from internal incentive structures or our bosses, whatever it is, the pressures are overwhelming for us to play the finite game. And so how do you stand up to massive external pressure? Courage. And courage is something that comes from relationships. You know, it's external. A, a, a world-famous trapeze artist would never attempt a brand new death-defying act for the first time without a net. They would never do it. So why do we think that we could do something difficult without external support too? Um, I've had the opportunity to meet real heroes, people who've risked their lives to save the lives of others with the belief that they were going to die. And they didn't. And when asked, why did you do it? They all say something similar, which is they would have done it for me. It's external. And so we have to have, we have to take the time to foster and take care of people around us, to nurture our relationships, because when we're gonna be doing something difficult, when we're gonna be swimming upstream, when we're gonna be innovating and, 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 and doing something different, there are days we're gonna doubt ourselves, there are days we're gonna get knocked in our ass, there are days that storms are gonna rise, and we have to have people who say, I got your back. You need to do this. We need you, the world needs this. Keep going. I believe in you, you know? Um, and so courage, courage comes from, from not only our willingness to do that for others, but then their willingness to do it for us. And if we commit ourselves to a just cause and we're willing to, to do those things, then, you know, the great thing is we take a lot of people with us and change the world for the better. And isn't that sort of the, the point of an infinite life? To leave this world in better shape than we found it, to leave the companies that we work for in better shape than when we started, to leave our families stronger and better capable than 
than they can do without us. You know, isn't, isn't that what it means to live an infinite life, that we can live, literally live on beyond our own lives? So now when people have that and they take that mantle on and they have the ecosystem around them that gives them that powerful support that they need to really be courageous, and I'll assume for a second that the people watching this, they have that. One thing that I imagine a lot of people feel helpless to do is influence the culture of the company that they're already in. So is your, what is your advice for somebody that's in a company that they, they don't have an infinite minded culture? Don't. Don't be there? No. Don't try and influence that which you cannot influence. Don't control that which you cannot control. You know, an infinite mindset means that is something I can't do, but I can influence and take care of the people to the left of me and to the right of me. I can take care of the people who work for me. I can even take care of the person I work for. Sometimes we have a toxic boss, not because they're bad, but because we don't understand the pressure they're under. Sometimes to simply exhibit empathy to our boss. You know, hey boss, you were really harsh on us today. Everything all right? What's going on? I'm worried about you, you know? Um, I'm here, like we can, we can succeed together. I'm, we're here to help you, you know? If we're, no matter where we are inside an organization, leadership is not about rank or authority. Leadership is taking responsibility for the people around us. And so any, anybody on any team at any rank at any level can be a leader. The first choice is that we have to want to be. A, a dear friend of mine, Lieutenant General George Flynn from the Marine Corps said that the first criterion to being a leader is you have to want to be one. Um, so any of us can volunteer to be a leader. Um, and that's what you do. You commit yourself to seeing that the people with whom we work on a daily basis love coming to work. They feel that someone's got their back. They feel supported. They feel that they have top cover. They feel someone cares about them as a human being, listens to them, knows their story, allows them to be themselves. We can be that leader. Um, and what you start to see is those teams become really high performing. Those teams become super tight. And you start to hear rumors across the company because everybody wants into that team because apparently it's a great team to work with, to work on. Um, and before you know it, one of those people goes and moves to another team and they take everything that they learn, because leadership is learned, and they do it for another team. And if we take that infinite mindset, then eventually the tail will wag the dog. And it doesn't matter if it's this CEO or another CEO because we will outlast whoever's in charge right now. And that's the goal. We're doing this for the good of the organization. We're doing this for the good of the cause, right? and the tail can wag the dog. I love that. I think you've got your finger on something so important right now and I can feel um, this shift. It was, it, I can feel that there's a shift happening but they need the words to understand it and I feel like your book delivers that. And to me it was when you were explaining that the breakthrough moment for you was when you read about Infinite Games and suddenly you had the lexicon with which to conceptualize all this. And I feel like what your book is delivering on is giving people the, the framework with which to understand it. I can't remember where I saw this, but there was something that said, oh, there's this color, a shade of blue that's been lost forever, not because it doesn't exist in, in waveforms of light, but because we don't have a word for it. And because we don't have a word for it, we can't conceptualize it. And thusly our brain just shunts it off into one of the colors that we do have a name for. I thought, whoa, that's so powerful and so true and so accurate to the way that the brain works. And reading the book, that's what this felt like. It was like, now people are going to be able to talk about it in a way that's going to let them conceptualize what a company culture can be, the way that the company can be driven by something bigger than the profits. It gives them that organizing principle. I think that's so incredibly powerful. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I, I agree. And I mean, that's what happened for me, which is I found words for the discomfort I had. I had, for, I had words for, you know, when people called me naive and said, you don't understand how business works. I didn't have a, a response because I didn't have words. I just had a feeling. And they had more success than me and they had more power than me, so I didn't say anything. You know, call me old fashioned. I'd like to work for a company that outlasts me. I'd like to work for a company where I can feel like I could be myself when I go to work. I'd like to work for a company where I feel that my boss actually cares about me like I'm a human being, um, rather than a, you know, just a number on a spreadsheet. I'm with you there. Where can people find more about you? Where can they engage in this movement? Um, you know, I think the, the, the question is, you know, when people say, how do I join the movement? How do I be a part of it? Um, I always ask people the same thing, which is be the leader you wish you had. Become a student of leadership. Study it. Read about it. Watch things about it. Practice it every day. You know, like be a parent, you know, like join the movement means I'm, I'm going to take care of my team. Sometimes I'm in a leader pos leadership position and sometimes I'm not and it doesn't matter. I'm going to practice leadership. If I'm a salesperson, it, you know, I'm a, if, I'm, if I work at the, if I work at, uh, the, the check-in counter of an airline, I'm going to take care of the people I work with. I'm going to take care of the customers as if, as if they're my family. You know, like, 
practice leadership, learn about it, study it. Um, because I do these things because I, I recognize I'm just a piece of a jigsaw puzzle. You know, it's one of the reasons I wanted to come talk to you on camera. It's because, you know, when we do a jigsaw puzzle, the first thing you do is lean the, the picture, the, 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 the box against the wall, and then you start putting the pieces together to build that picture. My job in this movement, I'm the guy who points at the box. Right? I'm the one who's pointing at the picture, pointing at the picture, maybe pointing out a couple of the pieces and where they go, but I need lots of people to join me. We need lots of people to join us um, who say, I have a piece of the puzzle. I'm willing to lead this way. I'm willing to abandon Milton Friedman ideals and, and, and do something bigger, something more. Follow, you know, live with an infinite mindset, lead with an infinite mindset. Um, and put their piece down and say, how can I help build that vision? We, we, there's, we need the army. And so how people can engage in the movement is actually practicing all the stuff. More than anything else, that's what we need.